Hey guys, it's Quana back again for another review. I am taking these few precious moments where my children are out of the house to go ahead and film for you my Insecure Season 4 Episode 3 review. The episode is called Low Key Thankful. Um, this is a Thanksgiving episode of Insecure and it kind of echoes to what I talk about in my Episode 2 video where I really wish that... Um, Insecure would either air during the year that they would have longer episodes or more episodes and be spaced out a little bit better paced because I like it when a show has these very topical episodes that air during certain times of the year and you get the feeling around that. So if it was Thanksgiving or at least November and we were seeing the Thanksgiving episode, you would have the feelings of that, the readiness that we all feel, the anticipation we all feel. Sorry for scratching my eye here. Um, around that time kind of mirroring the Thanksgiving episode of the show. But I digress. The show pretty much starts with Issa and Molly grocery shopping to prepare for Thanksgiving. We um, see Issa throughout the show um, on social media. She's catching up with what's going on with um, Tiff, what's going on with um, Kelly. Um, both girls are celebrating with their families, and so they're not actually in this episode, but they're kind of like seen in the episode. And that was one of the downfalls that I see in this episode is that we're getting so much of the show now centered solely around Issa and Molly. It always has been, but I really wish that we would get more moments of all four girls together. And if you saw my episode one review, you saw that I mentioned the fact that she had that waiting to excel shirt on at the beginning where she's kind of like reflecting and talking on the phone and talking about how she doesn't even mess with Molly like that anymore. And I really want those sisterhood moments to happen on the show. But I digress. The show just didn't have enough Kelly in it for me. And I'm really ready for Kelly to have a storyline. I don't think she will. So I really hope that Natasha Rothwell can finagle this show and some of her other acting gigs that she's had. For instance, the recent Sonnet movie. And I hope she can parlay that into a show for herself because we want to see it. We want to see, we stand Natasha. She's very witty. She's very sharp. She's very good at ad-libbing. She's a very good writer. And I think it's time for her to have her own show. And I think it's time for us to have a big girl, black girl show that perhaps can give us a very well-rounded big black girl. So I'm just putting that out into the atmosphere. You have to speak those things into existence. So I'm speaking that into existence. We want to see it. So anywho, it starts with Issa and Molly and they're grocery shopping. Molly is trying to get avocados for her seven layer dip. And um, it seems like Issa is actually trying to like make a similar dish. And Molly's telling her how many avocados she needs for the dish. And Issa's like, ain't nobody got that kind of money for a dozen avocados. You know about a dozen avocados. Each avocado is $3. No, um, we about to buy some, um, some peso, some paste picante sauce and some chips. And they about to just dip these chips in some sauce and call it a day. Um, so I thought that was like, you know, basically really cute. And again, just kind of showing us the disparity of wealth between Molly and Issa and the fact that even that itself causes some division because their view of life and this, the lens by which they see life is so very different. Molly is trying to figure out if she should invite Andrew to her family's house, but she's already still got beef from her with her dad from when she found out that her dad was creeping out on her mom and so she really doesn't mess with her dad like that so she's already nervous and tense and Issa really isn't too shady when she says it's only been a couple of months do you really want to take him to your family's house for Thanksgiving being that you haven't really even hashed out stuff with your family Yes, all families have drama, have beef, but you got like ongoing, consistent, real-time beef right now. Do you really want to do that? Now, she didn't dress it up that way. She kind of made it seem like, well, you jump into things so fast and you're trying to put a label on it. And if it doesn't work out, are you going to be frustrated after or, or is it going to push him away? And I think those are good questions asked. She poses really good questions, but because Issa says this and Molly doesn't really want to hear it, she takes it solely as a negative. Um, so she looks at it as a strike against Issa. She kind of says something smart and snarky back to Issa. And basically it's like, 
and about the whole Lawrence and um, Lord, I want to keep that calling that girl's that girl's name, um, Condola, the Condola thing. And so I, um, she said something smart, snarky back to Issa and in that instance, they realize there is a real riff and they're saying they're making plans to hash it out, which is good. I kind of wish that they would have just taken the moment to go ahead and talk about it. Like say, okay, well, let's just go get some drinks and talk about and talk about, figure out what's going on. But they plan to meet up for pie later on and they're going to hash it out. So Issa goes off with her brother to her mom's house and they're going to be hanging out with their mom and their new stepdad or her boyfriend and I was so happy to see Tasha Mack you know Wendy Ra Wendy Raquel um Robinson is that her, her last name I don't know why I want to make that her I think that is her last name um back in the building I love you know she's amazing she is um black entertainment royalty so you know we just have to we have to acknowledge the contributions that she has had in the black industry especially the black television industry anyhow dinner falls through because the boyfriend gets injured and they're supposed to continue celebrating with his twin daughters but they're like f them twins <laughs> and they go to get mexican food and it was a really nice bonding experience to see Issa and her brother I really enjoyed that moment with them. Um, circling now to Lawrence and Calandra. Lawrence and Calandra are in bed. This is actually at the beginning of the show. And they, you know, getting their little happy on. And things seem to be going well. And we find out that she doesn't have family in L.A. So she's going to be having a Friendsgiving. It is very apparent to me and probably everybody in the viewing audience that she had not planned to ask Lawrence, but he invites himself to the dinner and he actually really gets along with her friends and they're very impressed by him. And through all of this, we learn some information about her. We learned that she was married, but she's recently divorced and Lawrence might really be her rebound guy. Like she really is not maybe looking at him to be like the guy she settles down with. She really might just be looking at getting her boots knocked. And so he feels some kind of way about this. So in the midst of all that, also there are some trouble going on at his job and he's not climbing the ladder as fast as he would. Now we're going to need Lawrence to take a pause and remember that two seconds ago, he was a bum on Issa's couch. He just got this job two seconds ago. You're not going to climb up the corporate ladder in an instant like that. These things take time, baby steps. You got to crawl before you walk. And he's really being unrealistic. And this is the same problem that Lawrence had in season one when Issa was trying to get him to be motivated to apply for jobs just to try to do something so that he could get up off her couch and contribute. She wasn't saying that he was incapable of doing anything, but she was saying it is baby steps. You have to throw your hat in the ring and do something before you're going to get what you want. So um, going to Molly now, Molly goes home. Things are tense with her family, but eventually it seems like she does make some peace through a through some words that her brother gives her about him needing to, her needing to let stuff go. Like, first of all, this didn't happen to you. It happened to Ma. Yes, we were lied to, but Ma got over it and she made her peace about it and he apologized and you need to let it go. And it really, I don't think that it absolves, I don't think, I don't think that we should look at it as him gaslighting her feelings because she is allowed to feel the way that she wants to feel like she has a skewed view of relationships because she felt like she had this perfect bubble of what a good marriage was and this was not really true. However, you could look at it as her parents sacrificed, her mom sacrificed to make sure that she grew up in a two-parent household and with some semblance of how people with different ideas and different experiences come together to work to form a unit and it's not always pretty and it's not always good and sometimes people make choices that we ourselves would not make but they are allowed to do that because it is their choice and mom seems like she's okay and she's happy now so she got to get over it and so at the end of it we do kind of see molly get over that but in the meantime Issa is texting her trying to find out hey let me know when it's time for pie and i'll come over 
she kind of just says, okay, whatever. Like she gives her a very passive aggressive. Okay. That's not really like making her feel like she's ready for her to come over. And so East has had a lot going on. I mean, her, her Thanksgiving plans fell through. She's at the restaurant at the Mexican restaurant, having Thanksgiving dinner with her brother. And that has changed her timeline. And so when Issa says, you know, when she kind of gives, Molly gives her that kind of passive aggressive, okay, yeah, whatever. Issa's like, okay, well, maybe I should just wait and we shouldn't deal with this right now because it's not going to work out well. And at the end of it all, lo and behold, but doesn't she get a message from Lawrence's raggedy tail trying to, you know, zip his toe into the water just to see if something is there because he feels rejected from Condola. And it goes back to what Issa was saying, like about her feeling like Condola was reaping the reward for all of her hard work that she put in for five years. But Lawrence still is trash. He still hasn't become what he's supposed to be. So you need to leave him over there on the shelf, let him stay in the oven and continue baking. And maybe one day he'll grow up and become a big boy. But right now she needs to stay far away from that. Now, what will I say? What do I say about I'm not team Issa. I'm not team Molly, even though I know I have come down kind of hard on Molly in this review. But I do wish that these two women would speak their mind and just say, I don't like it when you do X. I did not like it when you did Y. I felt disrespected or unseen and unheard when you did this. So they can really clear the air. These two women need to sit down and they need to go to therapy together. And maybe there's something to be said of that. If you have a dysfunctional friendship, friendship is just like a marriage. We got to stop throwing away people's friendships like you can just make a friend I'm gonna tell you right now as an adult it is hard to make friends most of my friends are people who I still hung out with in college it is so hard to be make friends and it is really hard to make friends when you are a mom and you have kids so rather than just throw away your friendship and let it just fall by the wayside they need to do the hard work and do the investing to fix their miscommunications because at the end of the day these men out here, if you don't find them the right way, they could be raggedy and you're going to need your girlfriends to lean on. So you better go ahead and fix and repair that friendship and relationship first. So that's my two cents about this episode. Um, it was okay. I, people online were like, oh, it's a 10. It was the bomb. I was like, mm, it was an eight at best because there wasn't enough Kelly in it. And even Tiffany, I would have liked, liked to have seen Tiffany and there's a whole lot of storylines that we're not getting and it just is too short. Issa, it is too short. We need an hour or we're going to need more episodes. You figure it out. Okay, hon. But that is all I have to say. Hopefully I will find a way to get my hands on and be able to watch next week's episode on time and be able to sneak away and film on Monday so that you guys can get this video a little bit faster. But until then, guys, love you, stay beautiful, and toodles!